Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Tournament Decor. How are you? We are all ready to paint with you guys live today. And I'm getting my phone set up because I always like to create a fun little time lapse video of my painting. So make sure I've got that set up and going. There we go. Um, how are you? Hi, Becky from in Illinois and Christy. Good afternoon. Hello, Lynn. Hi, Jerry and Deborah from Texas. So today we're going to be painting this fun little happy Easter door hanger. <laughs> Hello, Ida and Ashley. She said, I can't wait to see what this will look like. So um, we've started doing something fun the last couple of weekends when we release new designs in the shop. Um, we post a poll like on Saturday asking you which one you want to see me paint live on Tuesday. And so we did that last weekend. And the, the vote was so, so close that I ended up painting two last week. Um, and then this week, the vote wasn't as close, but this surprised me. I really thought you guys would want to see me paint the cute bunny ears, but most of you chose this one because it has an ombre design in the background with zebra print on top. And so you guys were asking for this one because you wanted to learn this particular technique. Now I will say this, I don't usually teach a whole lot of techniques here on my Facebook page because I try to keep it um, somewhat beginner level for those of you who've never painted before. But if, um, if you want to learn more techniques and you're not um, exactly like sure where to begin, Painters Clubhouse, we have all kinds of techniques in there that you can go and learn from at any time. Also, hello, Michelle. Welcome. Hi, Sandy. I want to know, oh, Nancy, you must have read my mind. She was answering my question before I even asked. I wanted to know how many of you guys had signed up for our wooden letter workshop that we're going to be doing. So we have, we have ads running and everything. So you may have seen a photo similar to this pop up in your newsfeed. It's me holding a bunch of blank letters from the store. And we're going to be teaching you how to paint these in a workshop on uh, March 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Thanks, Shan. Shan's handing me all the letters. Um, and so if you want to learn three different painting techniques, the G is actually my favorite. Look at, look at this G. Isn't that cute? If you want to learn three different painting techniques for how to paint wooden monogram letters, um, come and sign up for our wooden letter workshop. It starts on March 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Each night live inside a Facebook group, I'm going to teach you how to paint these cute little letters. Shan's taking a picture of me. <laughs> It's hard to hold them all. <laughs> um, so one of them will be leopard print. One will be this fun little farmhouse stripe. And another will be the flowers. And so you can actually use the techniques that we're going to teach in this workshop on any door hanger that you want to paint. You wouldn't even have to use it on wooden letters if you didn't want to. Kimmy said, I got my letters ordered from you. Yeah. And if you can't get to a, a craft shop, like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, um, we can sell you the wooden letters um, at a very comparable price to what you get them at Hobby Lobby for. Laura said, I really like that G, but every time I see the B, I like it more. And you could do that letter B with any pink scheme. So right now it's done sort of with primary colors, but you could do it with like pink and teal and purple and some fun colors like, like what I've got up behind me. Um, let's see, Michelle said, I signed up through Painters Clubhouse. What is the actual size of the letters you're holding? They're 18 inches. So yes, Michelle um, and all the rest of you that are Painters Clubhouse members, you do not have to pay for this workshop. You get to participate for free. So all you have to do is go inside Painters Clubhouse and click to join the Facebook group. Um, everything is going to be taught inside the Facebook group. It's going to be done live. I'm even going to take you on a shopping trip with me March 15th. Um, I'm going to grab my hubby. He's going to be my cameraman. We're going to go to Hobby Lobby, probably Michael's, and probably Walmart. And I'm going to take you through the stores and show you where to find the supplies that you need if you like to get out and go shopping that way. Any other questions about the workshop before we get started painting? Hello, Linda. She said, I'm excited. I've got everything ordered with express shipping. Awesome. <laughs> Karen said, I might have to order more from y'all as I live an hour from the nearest town. You totally can. And you can order your paints through Deco Art if you like to. Um, we have all of the supplies and everything listed inside the Facebook group in the guides section. So after you sign up, just head on over there and you'll find all the instructions. Sheila has signed up. Awesome. Who else? Who else has signed up? Um, hello, Jenna. Welcome. What time EST? Um, it'll be around 
I think 7 p.m. on the 23rd, 8.30 p.m. on the 24th, because I go to church on Wednesday nights, and 7 p.m. on the 25th, which is a Thursday night. So it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I believe. Thank you, Susan. She said those letters look great. Okay, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Pat has signed up. Sharon has. Melissa has. Jerry has. Welcome, guys. Okay, so today we're going to be painting this really cute little Easter egg with um, an ombre design, and then we're gonna add some zebra to it. So a lot of you guys had been um, asking how to do the zebra print. Hang on, I gotta figure out how to get my, there we go. I couldn't figure out how to bring the other other thing back up on the screen. The screen. How do you get your templates with the Template Club? Tina, shoot an email to info at southernadornmentsdecor.com and they can send you instructions for that. Okay, so the paint colors we're working with today are, peony pink and Laguna and we're going to be taking these colors and we're going to um we're going to do the teal up at the top and the pink at the bottom and then where they meet in the middle I'm hoping it's going to create a beautiful color of purple if for some reason the purple doesn't turn out right we'll add our own purple but this is sort of an experiment with the ombre so we're starting with the teal and the pink we're going to go ahead and cover the entire background and then after that's covered we will um, add in our zebra stripes and then we'll do the letters and the stars. So you're going to need a fairly large size brush with nice springy bristles that flex really well. This one is, uh, I think, an inch and a quarter wide. Go ahead and get it a little bit damp so that it's not real dry. And then we're just going to start with the teal. This is the Laguna color. Look how pretty that is. Oh, by the way, check out my Easter, Easter nails. Look how cute these are. We got little bunnies. And polka dots. <laughs> I went and had those done yesterday. Lynn says, I love this sign ready for springtime. I am too. If I don't know if you guys can hear it in the background, but we've got the window in my craft room open because it got a little warm in here. And you can hear the frogs croak, croaking outside. It sounds like spring. So this is the Laguna color. So we're just going to start by laying that down. If you hear clicking, that's my assistant Shan taking pictures in the background. Your glasses. Oh, yeah, I do need my glasses. Thank you. <laughs> I did that last time. And I was like, why can't I see the words? <laughs> you love my nails. Thank you so much. Lynn says, I love the sign. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you for sprinkling the love, by the way. I saw somebody say they had done that. So I'm just kind of laying down a nice little base coat here. It's probably going to take two coats of this. So we're not going to worry about ombreing it together just yet, okay? We're just laying down our background colors. So let's see. Let's do the teal to about down to here. Just find yourself a little stopping point and kind of do your teal to there. And then uh, we're going to do our pink down here and do a base coat of it. So I'm going to rinse my brush. After we enter into the stream yard. Oh, did it kick you out? Thank you for sprinkling the love, Debbie. I think I actually kicked myself out. <laughs> Annette says she's glad I chose this one. Did you vote for this one, Annette? Vicki says, if you hear frogs, that means frost is out. Does that mean there's not going to be any frost? I'm confused. What does it mean when you say frost is out? <laughs> Ooh, this color is so pretty. This is the peony pink. By the way, if you want to do this design, these are sold in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. You can get the printable template to cut your own piece of wood, or you can get the wood blank to ship to your house and you can paint one yourself. Yes, you did the technique. Awesome. If you have not signed up for our wood letter workshop, you can sign up at the link in the video description up above. Just kind of tap on the screen. It should pop up and appear. Click over there and sign up. It's only $10 to participate. And you learn three different painting techniques that you can use on wooden letters. I know some of you guys, I got on here last night to talk about the workshop. And some of you guys were saying you already had letters in your closet that you had bought at a craft store previously and didn't know what to do with them yet. <laughs> so I'm glad you're already ready for the challenge or for the workshop. Pam Savage asked, does deco art still make that pink? I believe they do. If they don't, I'm going to be very sad. But I think they do. 
whoops, I'm kind of slopping it over the edge. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this up about midway and then we'll start blending in the middle. So I want to have like a, a clear, the thing with ombre that a lot of people mess up on is they make it look like they have stripes of color. And right now that's kind of like, like looks like what I've got going on. But um, to achieve the look where it actually looks ombre, you've got to use both colors at the same time and blend them while they're still wet. So if you've had problems doing ombre before and it's not turned out right, that's probably your issue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dry this with a hairdryer and do one more coat on the pink and the teal, and then we'll do the middle. Okay, Lynn was asking how long shipping is taking. The shipping shouldn't take very long because we have been able to whittle our shipping time down quite a bit. So there's ship the letters for this workshop are shipping out within 24 to 48 hours of the order being placed right now. And I can't guarantee that it will stay that way, but we are trying our best to keep up with the demand. And so if you order the letters from us, um, you should get them in time for the challenge. Of course, we can't control how fast the postal service actually delivers your packages, but we can, are doing the best we can on our end to get your packages out the door quickly. Okay, I need a little bit more of this peony pink. And I'm just putting a quick second coat on here. Okay, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do a quick second coat on the teal. Does it help to spray paint it to keep it, wait, does it help to spray the paint to keep it wet? I've never sprayed the paint to keep it wet. Look here. What color is my water turning? Purple. <laughs> Shan said, well, what color purple are you going to use? I said, I'm going to blend the teal and the pink together to make purple. And then looky there, our water's already turning the exact color of purple that I wanted. So that gives me hope that the colors I chose were good ones. Um, but if you're worried about keeping your paint wet, you can keep a little bit of water on your brush, or you can use something called matte fluid medium. And the matte fluid medium helps extend the wetness of your paint. Um, and it allows for more blending. So if you have never tried that stuff, you might want to pick some of it up. I prefer just to paint quickly and use a little bit of water instead of mess with using the matte fluid medium. It's just a personal preference though. Lots of people like it. All right, I'm just touching up a few areas where the paint was showing through. And then we're gonna get to the fun part. Kim, Kimmy B asked for the ordering, the deco paint, do you have that on your website? Um, so actually it's in the video description right now. So if you wanna order directly from deco art to get their paint, um, just tap on the screen and you can click the link in the video description. All right, so we've got our teal down. So now we're going to uh, we're going to need a little bit more pink and a little bit more teal to be able to do this blending in the middle. So let me add some more to my egg carton here. Hi, Cindy. Pam says peony pink takes a few coats. Um, a little bit. I haven't noticed it uh, being that bad, though. OK, so I'm just going to start with the teal. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. trying to get a nice, and I'm probably going to wet my brush because if you feel the brush dragging and you're not getting good coverage, just get a little bit of water on your brush. Keep extending that teal down and keep it, keep moving quickly so that it stays wet or use matte fluid medium if you're having trouble with that. Now I'm going to go get my pink, look here, pink and teal on my brush at the same time and go right across the edge of that teal. And I'm going to blend up and then back down a little bit. Isn't that a pretty color? That is. So pretty. Makes me think of Lisa Frank. <laughs> now I'm picking up more pink. And I'm just going to extend that pink on down. 
We've got a little bit of a harsh line right up there, but it's okay. We're going to work that out in a minute. So I'm just picking up more pink, get a little bit of water and the water helps with the blending. So now we're just going to blend upwards. Actually, I'm going to pick up a little bit more teal too, right here to soften this area because you want to have a really soft transition. You don't want it to be really stark. So now just sweeping left to right with a damp brush up and down and we're blending, blending, blending. It's creating a really nice transition right here through the middle. A little bit more water. And the more you keep going back and forth, it's just blending those colors. I feel like I need a little bit more teal though. The pink is dominating. So add a little bit more teal. And I'm just going to pull that teal slowly back and forth down. Whoops. See, I didn't want that. Let me dab some of this off on a paper towel. And I'm going to go back with my teal, a little bit of water, and just kind of undo. Hang on. I think at this point I'm going to rinse my brush. I've got so much pink in my brush, it's bringing the pink higher than I want it to be. Okay. So with just a damp brush, I can almost erase what I just did. There we go. So now I only have teal in my brush. So pick up some more teal. Oh, my teal has some paint boogers in it. I keep calling it teal, but technically this is Laguna by Deco Art. And it's almost empty. <laughs> I keep having to Do hold it upside know? down and um, I may, but I think this will probably be enough for this project. So it's okay. Okay. I'm just going to lay down some more teal. You have to be patient with ombre. Sometimes you just have to keep working with it. So just keep working until it feels like it's well blended. Got a little bit of pink. Now I feel like I've got too much teal on my brush. So I'm going to go back and get some pink now. And we're just creating that purple right through the middle. You can't be a perfectionist if you're wanting to do ombre. <laughs> just so you know. It's definitely one of those things that you have to just kind of let go and let the paint do what it's going to do. And just pick, keep picking up a little bit more paint as you're blending. Okay, I'm going to rinse this teal out of my brush. Because it started to pull more purple down here than I wanted. So it's a little bit temperamental. You just got to keep playing with it. Okay, I think I like that. So let me hold this up and kind of show you how it looks now. Kim says, I love those colors. I just signed up for the letter painting class. Awesome. Um, somebody else asked a question. Will the workshop be where I can watch it on my own time rather than live only? Yes. So you will be able to watch them on replay if you aren't able to participate live with us. And Melissa said, I'm going to go ombre everything. <laughs> Lynn loves the mix of colors. So it created a really pretty purple right here in the middle. Okay, so now we've got to dry this really good so we can do our zebra stripes. Hmm? Oh, um, and I had been wanting to pick some people in the comments to um, surprise with some goodies. So let's see, Karen Hyrath, am I saying your name right? Hyrath, if you will um, shoot us a PM with your address, I'll send you some happy mail. Karen Hyrath, thank you for commenting and being here. Well, um, let's see. Yes, I am right using Revolution Flywood from Lowe's. You know, I was just thinking this literally looks like an Easter egg that you might have dipped dyed twice in pink and teal, you know, and then it blended in the middle. 
<laughs> Susie says, I love the colors you pick. I can't help but pick teal and almost everything I do. Shan teases me whenever I paint something that doesn't have teal. She's like, you mean you didn't use teal on it this time? Um, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Can't wait to see how you do the print. So this is going to be the tricky part. Well, okay. I just said ombre was tricky. This is going to be tricky too. So this, this definitely is not um, a beginner's tutorial. So I'm going to actually use my photo as a reference of the Easter design. And if you don't know what it is, I'll put it up on the screen real quick for you so you can see it. Um, it's one of the designs we released in our shop this past week. So we've got to create this zebra print in the background. So if you need to, when you're painting this, pull up a reference photo for you to look at and get out some chalk, just regular old chalk that a teacher would use. And then we're just going to kind of create some waves and some stripes in here that will be our zebra zebra print. So I'm just kind of drawing it in there and I'm using the photo for reference in case I'm not sure. Let's see, let's bring this and then we'll bring it down here. So this is the, definitely the tricky part if you're uncomfortable doing this. But the thing is about this is if you feel like it's not turning out the way you had in mind, get out a baby wipe, wipe off your chalk and start over. Okay. It's very forgiving that way. So now let's do some from this, from this side. Let's bring some in down here and it kind of just weaves in between each other. Lynn Hiller said that she saw a Glowforge, Glowforge advertised on TV yesterday. What? Really? How cool. Yeah, if you guys don't have a Glowforge yet, you would love it. Uh, Shan was actually geeking out with me earlier because she had never seen me cut anything on the Glowforge yet. And uh, she's like, can I watch it in action? And so we cut out this, this door hanger that I was going to be painting. Okay, let's do a real skinny one, like in the picture right across here. So that'll be a nice little skinny one. So it might even help if you want to like just to color in the areas because it's going to be hard to tell what's what after you get all these stripes on here. So if you need to kind of color in a little bit the stripe areas, that way you'll know where the black goes. So I'm just going to kind of color this in. Now you can kind of clearly see what is zebra. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so now our zebra stripes are starting to be colored in. Let's keep working downward. We're going to do another one, kind of going this way. And then we'll paint these in just a moment. So it looks like across the middle, we just have a few skinnier ones. And then over here, we kind of have one going like this. Kind of curving in and stopping. And then we have another one that kind of goes all the way up and over. And it's all filled in. Is this helping you guys to watch this process? Is it helpful? You're, are you understanding the technique now? Because I know a lot of you guys were really baffled by how to do this technique. Cheyenne Coffee asks, I wondered if you could paint over chalk. Yes, you can. I mean, I wouldn't put a ton of chalk. I'm trying to put it on very lightly, but yes, you can. And then we'll just do this bottom area right here. Maybe even add in one more right there. You don't want any like really obvious places that are missing a stripe. So I, I added in one skinny one kind of right here. Okay, so that's our zebra print. Now we get to paint it in. So we're gonna use some black and I might even water it down just a little bit because it helps it um, sort of when you're painting it, it just helps. I wanted to use this brush, but it's got a couple of stray hairs. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's another one that'll work. Our Twitch streamer says, I'm just watching and having a good time. <laughs> We're actually streaming to Twitch. We've just started doing that recently. So if you're watching from Twitch, thank you for being here and commenting. Feel free to give us a follow if you enjoy this. Um, we teach every week on Facebook and YouTube. This is a wooden door hanger that you would hang on your door, kind of like you would a wreath. Okay, so now that I've used my reference photo, let me go back so I can see your awesome comments. Um, and then Tony 
Tuttle Mata says, so helpful. I thought there is no way I could do this, but you showing us helps us a lot. Tony, I would love to send you some happy mail. So if you will, PM me or e email me at info at southernadornmentsdecor.com and we'll send you some happy mail. Um, Becky said, just got noticed that refab's going live right now. You all need to coordinate your lives. I can't keep up with Brooke. She's live all the time. <laughs> I adore her though. Um, Marina says, my son signed me up for Twitch. Awesome. I, I'm just new to Twitch. I don't know much about it. So I'm learning. Okay. So now I'm just taking a round tip brush with watered down black paint and I'm filling in on top of my chalk lines. Now, don't worry if you don't get your chalk completely covered up. If you have some kind of peeking out from the edges after this is completely dry, you could go back with a baby wipe and wipe that extra chalk off. So it's not a big deal. Okay. And if it looks like my paint is going on super smooth, it's because it's watered down. That's why I did that. You just have to be a little careful when you water down your paint because um, the paint will get a little drippy. So I have to be careful when I drip that I don't transfer some across the door hanger. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Shan's over here giggling. Our Twitch streamer. <laughs> she says I'm 16 Canadian and definitely the wrong demographic, but I'm living for it. <laughs> You're welcome here anyways. Any, everybody's welcome. It's kind of satisfying to watch the black paint just flow across. It's very smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth. It goes on very evenly. I'm loving zebra print right now. It kind of reminds me of uh, Lisa Frank. And if you're 16, you may not know what Lisa Frank is unless you, you know, are seeing some of it. I think they are putting some of it back in stores, though. I've been seeing some things. It's kind of like it's coming back. <clears throat> it was popular in the 80s and 90s. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Vanessa. I appreciate you. Coloring in those chalk stripes really helped a lot. I think I would have been trying to decide where to put the paint if I hadn't done that. So that was a game changer. You guys are going to be adding zebra print and, and ombre to everything now, aren't you? <laughs> you know them so well. Yeah. We taught them so well. <laughs> oh, apparently they can't hear the frogs. You can? Yeah. You can hear the frogs in the background. We've got the craft room window open because it's kind of warm in here with all the ring lights. And uh, when we opened it, we could hear the frogs croaking out in the pond. The good thing about zebra print is your stripes don't have to be like super smooth. They can be a little bit wobbly or a little bit um, wavy because that's just natural for them to kind of flow up and down. So if you've got a little bit of a shaky hand, I'm going to rotate a little bit because I want to get more of a point on this part right here. And I need to get my brush at a different angle to do that. I definitely think I'm going to have to get the baby wipes out afterwards and clean up the excess chalk. So I'll show y'all how to do that after we dry it. Just try to be careful and not drag your hand all through the chalk. Because you'll smear it all over the place. And then you might mess up your stripes. <laughs> Everybody saying, <laughs> you love this one. Yeah, if you want to get the, the design, if you want to purchase a wood blank from us, you can get them at shopdoorhangers.com or you can click on the link up in the video description to get this particular design. We have um, hundreds of designs in there. So if you're not in the mood for Easter, if you want to skip straight to summer, you can go and search through there and find some fun summer designs. Um, you can purchase the templates that you can print and cut your, 
and cut out your own wood using the templates, or you can get the wood blanks and have them shipped to your door. Trying to avoid getting black all over this little star here, so just going around it. Jennifer Cantrell Scott says, I've been begging my husband for a glow forge for a couple of months now. Hopefully he will give in soon. You got to give him a reason. Like, think of it like you're trying to convince your parents to buy you um, or to get you a cell phone or something. And you would come up with all the reasons why you need a cell phone. You would probably create like a poster board with, with an argument of all the reasons why you need one and how it's going to change your life and all this stuff. So come up with all the reasons why you need a glow forge. And then, um, you know, when he sees that not only is it going to make your life better, but it might make his life better in some way, then he might be willing to negotiate. Because so many of you guys who have bought laser cutting machines have been able to pay them off with six months of, of having them because of the things you're able to create. It just opens up a whole world of possibilities of what you can create. And so then it expands what all you're able to sell. I feel like this stripe... Well, no, it could disappear behind the star. I was going to say, I feel like it needs to go to the other side, but maybe it doesn't. Debbie Chamberlain asks, what kind of brush are you using to make the stripes? Um, it is a round tip brush. We have these in our shop. It's a size eight. And so it's it's got a nice thick bodied bristles. Means That means it holds lots of paint. And we've watered the paint down. So the paint is flowing like butter. It's just so smooth. Okay, we've got our straps all painted. Looks pretty good. Let's dry it. Okay. Um, Christy Haley, I love your comment. She said, I'm living the good life. I'm at work watching you paint and listening to the frogs. I can't ask for a better day if you had to be at work. Well, Christy, I'm going to make your day even better. I'm going to send you some happy mail. All you have to do is email us at info at southernadornmentsdecor.com and give us your address and we'll send you something in the mail. Um, you love my pink hair dryer. <laughs> it's just an old cheap one. Okay, so now I got my baby wipe out. I'm going to kind of wrap it around the tip of my finger and just gently, ever so gently, because you don't want to brush off the paint that you just put on there because it will pick up the paint if you do it too hard. Just start swiping at those little areas that have a little bit of chalk showing. You may even need to rotate your baby wipe over to get a fresh part of the baby wipe if it starts to collect any black paint on it. But just do it as gently as you can. So you don't mess up your paint. Not to mention your paint may not be completely dry because I just got my my um, baby wipe in a part that wasn't really dry. I didn't mess anything up, but it was picking it up. Just cleaning up that chalk. Not to mention, even if you do paint directly on top of your chalk, sometimes the chalk can get transferred by your hand and all that. And so this just kind of helps. Whoops. I just made a boo-boo, y'all. Hang on. Let me clean it up with the baby wipe. I smeared the black paint. It wasn't dry right there. Luckily, a baby wipe takes care of that. There we go. Um, it just picks up any of that extra chalk dust. So it makes it look better. This is very Lisa Frank. It yes. is very Lisa Frank, isn't it? Um, by the way, if you're using a baby wipe to clean up your chalk dust, don't do a whole lot of back and forth because you will get tons of like baby wipe fuzz all over your door hanger that you don't want. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm just going to go back to my round tip brush and touch up a couple of places because sometimes when you're painting with chalk, 
the chalk will disguise the coverage of your brush and you won't be able to see that you missed a spot. So now I'm just going back and kind of touching up a few little places where the paint didn't cover real well. And I may even touch up that little spot that I messed up with the baby wipe. It's looking good. Trina says when you spray the gloss, it will magically make the chalk disappear. Hmm. I haven't noticed that. That's good to know, though. Uh, Debbie, Deb loves this. Awesome. Thank you. What brand or type of baby wipes do you recommend? Honestly, I'm just using the cheap parents choice baby wipes. <laughs> um, hello, Gina from Indiana. Hello, Carolyn and your mother. She said her mother's 95 and is watching with me. She's impressed with your painting and your beautiful smile. I feel honored to have you here with us. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah. <laughs> Somebody watching from Twitch says, I never thought to use a baby wipe while painting. I'm going to steal that idea. Steal away. It's definitely a good one. Now, if you can only get your paint party ladies to wipe off the wood <laughs> baby wipes, or does it use a lot of that fuzz? I feel like if you do a lot of back and wipe, back and forth action, it does at, leave a little bit of residue. Okay, I'm going to dry where I've touched up, and then we're going to do the stars and the lettering. <laughs> Sorry, Karen, I think I misunderstood your question. You asked mm -hmm. after I cut it out with the Glowforge, what do I wipe off the wood? I don't wipe off the wood after I cut it with the Glowforge. If you can see right up here in the corner where um, it kind of has a burned edge, I just paint right over that. Um, now, if I'm painting white or something, sometimes I will go and um, sand it so that the, the burned edge is, is gone because white does not cover that so well. Okay, I need a flat tip brush. I'm going to use one that's about a half inch. And we're just going to paint these stars white to start with, and then we'll put some yellow on top of them. And don't worry about the words. They are laser etched, and I can still see them through all the paint, even though I've got tons of ombre and leopard print or zebra print on there I can still see them so it's nothing to worry about okay trying to get that base coat of white nice and smooth let's do this one down here if you want to use a flat tip brush to get up in a nice pointy area tip your brush straight up and down and put the brush in the point and then pull it down and out of that point it'll help you stay inside your lines joanne asks does sanding help take off the burn marks from the glow forge yes and I would sand it lightly. Don't sand it really hard, but you could sand it lightly and it will help take off those burn marks. The burn marks don't usually matter unless you're painting white or a lighter color over the burn marks. Okay, we've got them painted white. It's feeling so Lisa Frank right now. Let's dry this. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. So I have this little thing in the bottom of my paint cup, and I forgot we put it in there before I went live. One of our Paint to Profit members, I think it was Erica Johnson, told us about it. They're called paint pucks. Check this out. And it's got a suction cup on the bottom, and it suctions to the bottom of your water cup 
so that when you're cleaning your brushes, you can just kind of swirl your brush on top of that paint puck. So I've got one in the bottom of my mug. And while I was pouncing my brush in there, I was like, what is that? I forgot it was in there. So these are really cool. So you may see these in a future Fab Five um, video. Okay, now let's go to our yellow. I'm using Patio Paint in Sunshine Yellow from Deco Art. And this one covers way better than any other yellow that I've ever used. So if you don't have that particular kind of paint, you may want to try it. So the sunshine yellow is really nice and bright and has awesome coverage. You getting cold working in front of the window? Yeah. <laughs> we started out hot and now she's getting cold. I'm always cold though. <laughs> I actually have a sweatshirt that says always cold. Um, somebody asked about the shirt that I'm wearing. This one is not from Cotton Chaos. This one was actually part of the framed t-shirt club it says beautiful things are never perfect so um if you're interested in the framed t-shirt club um you can say something in the comments and i'll come back later and drop a link for you cotton chaos also has a t-shirt subscription theirs is called the cotton picking club mm -hmm. so it just depends on what style shir shirts you like better if you like the cotton chaos style or the framed style i am a subscriber to both <laughs> so i get lots of t-shirts i get two new t-shirts every month so now we're just filling in our stars with the yellow and it's going on marvelously on top of this white. I actually just got outside the lines right there, but it's okay. Whoops. Hang on. I just made a bigger mess. Somebody asked earlier if I paint the edges. No, I do not. Um, unless I'm cutting them with a jigsaw. If I cut them with a jigsaw and they just have a raw wood edge, I will paint them. But since this is laser cut from the Glowforge, um, I like the burned edge look. It's nice and clean, so I don't paint the edges. Another use for the baby wipes, if you get out of hand with your paintbrush, just clean it up. Sometimes I paint too fast and then I get in a hurry and mess up. And the only reason I paint fast is because I get excited and I can't wait to see the finished product. So, it's not because I'm actually in a hurry. Okay, we've got our yellow down. Terry says, you always make this look so easy and give me the confidence to do it. That's the point, Terry. I want to give you uh, the confidence that you can do this too, because honestly, anybody can do this. This is not something you have to have a special skill for. Um, the more practice you do and the more, um, more you put into it, the better you'll get at it. I started about six years ago, and so um, I've been doing it long enough now that I don't really have to think about it too much. And it's just easy, but it didn't start out that way for sure. So anybody can learn to do this. All right. I have switched to a really small filbert tip brush because the word happy up here at the top is super skinny. And so I'm just filling it in with white paint. You could also use a paint pen for this if you prefer. I kind of feel like I get better coverage with a brush. That's what I'm doing. And notice I'm re-dipping my brush frequently, like almost after every stroke. And sometimes white takes more than one application to get it covered well, especially when you're painting on top of black like I'm doing. And I'm not freehanding this. I am just tracing right over the laser etched lines that I can still, see. you guys can't see them, but I can still see them through the paint. Are there any questions? Trying to find <laughs> can the Glowforge cut the detail lines too? Yes. So I was showing Shan before we went live here and I've showed this on a fa previous Facebook live. Um, you can set it up to etch the lines. And so it's called scoring on the Glowforge. So I have it score the design, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm painting inside those score lines. And then I have it cut the outside edge of the design. So the scoring uses less laser power. And so it doesn't cut all the way through the wood. It just etches it. A Facebook user asked what type of wood do you use when laser cutting? Um, right now I'm using Revolution Plywood, which is... Um, a wood that you can get from Lowe's. Hang on, let me try this.
Um, but I also like quarter inch MDF, but it's a little harder to find in my town. So um, I would have to special order it, but I really prefer the MDF. I think it's a higher quality stuff. And I'm just doing a quick second coat to make sure I have good coverage on my white. Notice that I dried it between coats. That helps the second coat stick to the first coat well. Lynn asks, how do you keep from getting paint on your shirt? And she loves <laughs> your nails. I, you know, I've, I've been drying it pretty frequently throughout, um, throughout the whole thing. But sometimes I do get it on my shirt. I'm not perfect. I do end up getting it on my shirt. I always end up with it on my hands, too. Um, but I try to make sure to not lean on it or, um, whoops, hang on. I just got my hand in the white paint and transferred it. Baby wipe to the rescue. Um, so yeah, I just try to make sure I keep the area dry that's near my body for sure. But it has happened before. But if you ever get paint on your clothes, just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol in a toothbrush and put like a paper towel underneath the paint, un like underneath on the inside of the shirt and scrub it with rubbing alcohol. And that rubbing alcohol will break down the, the acrylic in the paint. Melissa says, I have to wear paint clothes. <laughs> um, Melissa, I'm not sure. I may, I may have to do that inside um, Painter's Clubhouse sometime. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a larger brush. This one might work. It's another filbert tip brush, but it's wider. And so I was measuring it on the wood here to make sure that it wasn't going to be wider than the letters. So now we're going to do the big word, Easter. Jean Colvin asks, how do you come up with your ideas? Um, all over the place. I love to go shopping and to see kind of like what is in the stores and what is trendy right now. I also like to look at um, like home decor magazines and stuff because it kind of lets me know um, what's in style. Um, sometimes I'll just go shopping at places like Dollar Tree or Big Lots and take pictures of things that inspire me and then come home and figure out a way to turn that into a door hanger. You just never know. Annette asks, or Annette thanks you for the paint removal tip. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, and after you get the paint, you know, mostly out of your clothes with the rubbing alcohol, then just treat it with regular stain remover and toss it in the wash. And don't dry it until you've got all the paint out. So if you take it out of the wash and it still has a little bit of paint on it, treat it again and then try washing it again. This lettering is a lot bigger, so that's my switch to a larger brush. It would take me forever to paint this lettering with that tiny little brush. Susie asked, does the white paint first make the yellow paint pop better? I think so, yes. I also use white paint behind um, like orange because a lot of times it'll make your oranges brighter. So if you have a hard time getting your yellow to be nice and bright, try using um, white underneath it. Sky Bates kind of asks, you don't find that MDF swells in moisture and humidity outside? Question mark? Um, if it was left outside for a really long time, like for months and months, it might. Um, I try to give it a nice clear coat front and back so that it doesn't happen. But you know, if it's left out for months and months and months on end, eventually, if you don't reseal it and continue, like I think you would probably have to give it a second coat of sealer after several months um, of leaving it up. So if you notice that it's starting to try to swell, maybe give it another coat. But other than that, I've never really had, a, had trouble. I don't leave my door hangers up for months and months. I usually change them out. You have a lot of people on here telling them that they love watching you. Oh, thank you. You guys are sweet. I appreciate all the shares and the comments. You guys are awesome. 
and we have a lot of viewers from many places in the country and one outside the country. Oh, really? I'm located in Benton, Kentucky, which is kind of the western part of Kentucky. I think it's fascinating that we can hop on here and paint together and you guys are from all over the United States and some of you guys are even from other countries. I've seen Denmark, I've seen Canada, the UK, um, Australia. It's amazing. I guess when we were talking about glitter, Michelle says, I'm on a glitter kick now. I'll probably put glitter on the stars. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good idea. That'd be very Lisa Frank. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with glitter. I love glitter if I'm not the one putting glitter on something. I love glitter on my fingernails. I hate putting glitter on door hangers. And prime reason is because the other day I was, I thought, okay, I'm going to put some glitter on some leopard print. Got the glitter out. You know what I did? I dropped the entire container of gold glitter on the floor and it bounced off of my foot. So now there's gold glitter all in my carpet, all over my foot. And I'm like, this is why I don't use glitter. I can't, ha I can't handle it. It makes too mess, too much of a mess. <laughs> Cree Hodges asked, do you still use your Cricut now that you have your glow forge? Yes, but I don't use the Cricut to cut wood. I never have. I use the Cricut um, for different things like cutting paper or cutting stencils if I want to create a stencil that I can paint with. So the Cricut just kind of has its own job. It does different things, but it doesn't cut wood. Oh, this is a question I like. Judy asks, what is your favorite font? Oh, um, that changes. You know how somebody asks you what's your favorite song <laughs> and you can't pick one because that changes all the time? It's the same thing with a favorite font. Um, right now, I love Farmhouse Lemonade. It's a font, a font you have to pay for. Um, and I also love Donut Derby. Those are also paid fonts and they have fun little names. Um, I can't remember any others right now off the top of my head. Okay, we're gonna give this a second coat of this white paint. I don't usually like painting lettering white just because it's hard to get good coverage. Um, and it's a little tedious because you have to paint over it at least twice. Melissa asks, when will you do the Inkscape tutorial on how to cut the 3D images? I may teach it in Painter's Clubhouse sometime. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe next month in April. Those of you who have glow forges or laser cutting machines. Hmm. So uh, we talked about this at the beginning of the live and we haven't mentioned it since, but um, if you guys are interested in our workshop that we're doing, the signups began for it yesterday. We're teaching you three painting techniques on how to paint wooden letters from any craft store. Um, and that begins March 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We're gonna teach one technique every night on Facebook Live inside a private Facebook group. It's only $10 to participate. All you have to do is go to a local craft store or order your wood blanks from us if you wanna get your letters sent to you. Pick out any monogram or do three of them if you wanna do all the painting techniques. But you can use these painting techniques on any painting project that you want to do. You don't have to just do them on monogram letters. Um, I'll show them to you in just a moment. But we've got one that's got like farmhouse looking stripes. We have one that has um, leopard print and another one that has flowers. The flowers is actually my favorite. So if you haven't signed up for that workshop and you want to participate, the link is in the video description. It's called a wooden letter workshop. And we're actually going to take you on a shopping trip with me in that workshop. You have to sign up to participate, though. Um, and we're going to take you to Hobby Lobby and Michael's and maybe even Walmart and show you where to buy supplies in the store and what supplies I would choose if it were me. And who knows what else we'll find while we're shopping. It's going to be fun. And that will happen on March 15th during the day. But if you can't watch live, no worries. You can watch them on replay at any time. And you'll have access to these videos for at least a year. 
So you'll have plenty of time to complete the projects, even if you can't participate live on those exact days. Okay, we've got that lettering covered. I'm gonna switch back to my smaller brush to paint the word y'all down here because we're from the South. But of course, if you're from up North and you don't say y'all, you could just leave this part off. You could even add another star if you wanted to. Some people are telling you that you need to reconsider the glitter. I need to reconsider the glitter. <sighs> it's a love-hate relationship, me and glitter. Oh, Michelle asked, will paint pens work good for the stripes and lettering? Um, you could use them, yes. I feel like it's faster to do it with a paintbrush, but if you're more comfortable with a paint pen, you definitely could do it with a paint pen. I would just definitely, when you're sealing it, use a spray sealer to prevent um, bleeding and stuff like that on the paint pen marks. Sky Bates also says, Hello Honey is a great free font. Her, it's her favorite at the moment. Ooh, I'll have to check that one out. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> she said, I say y'all and I'm from the north. That's good to know. I have a friend of mine who lives in Pennsylvania. And uh, she's on our team here with Southern Adornments Decor. And she wanted to paint one of our designs. She goes, but I don't want to put y'all on it. She said, would it look, the, would it be just as cute if I put happy fall use guys? <laughs> and I, of course she was kidding, but that would be really funny. So I think she ended up just leaving the y'all part off of it. Now you have some people saying they're with you with the no glitter. <laughs> Team glitter, team no glitter. I love glitter. I just don't like using it in my craft projects, but I love wearing it like on glittery earrings or uh, stuff like that. Kimberly asked, what paintbrush are you currently using and what size is it? It's a Royal and Langnickel Crafter's Choice brush. Uh, it's a Filbert tip size two. So if I show you up close, see it's got a, a kind of a rounded tip. And that's what I'm doing to paint these little bitty letters. Okay, we've got all that painted. So now I'm gonna dry it. <laughs> now they're commenting team glitter. Um, and Jen says, I can't wait until I can paint lettering as fast as you do. Practice makes perfect, girlfriend. Chantilla says, where can I go to watch all of your videos? I cannot get on your page. You can go to my YouTube channel and watch there. Um, and if you subscribe, you'll be emailed every single time I go live. But if you don't want to miss another live video, I'm going to recommend that you get on our VIP texting service. Um, all you have to do is text me at the number on the screen and we will text you and let you know anytime anything exciting is happening. Um, if when we get ready to post those polls on which design, which design you think I should paint, we'll text you at that number. And I also text you when I'm getting ready to go live. Okay. The final thing, um, well, not the final thing. We still have to add a couple of finishing touches. But one of the final things I wanted to do is add a drop shadow with a pink Posca pen. Y'all have never seen me use a, po a colored Posca pen for a drop shadow before. So I know we're just stepping outside the box today. And we're going to do something cool. Um, so I'm going to add my drop shadow on the left side of each letter and the bottom. So you have to kind of think about your placement on the left and bottom side of each letter. But this is going to help that stand out um, on the black a little bit more. I have to concentrate when I do this so that I don't put my paint lines in the wrong spot. Jolly Bell says... I don't usually craft with glitter, but now I have a ladybug shaped glitter vacuum. What? Apparently that's a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. I just put a, a drop shadow in the wrong spot. So I'm erasing it with my baby wipe. If she caught it before it was too late. Yeah. If you catch it while it's still wet, you can still kind of wipe it up. Okay. 
it's hard to know where to put the lines sometimes. I have to really concentrate. Oh, Michelle says I got glitter on my shirt, so I walked to my husband and shook my shirt off. Oh. Him, and I told him I'm sprinkling the love. My husband would kill me. That's hilarious. I love that. Uh, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, my husband would be like, what? He would find a way to pay me back for that. He loves to aggravate. Oh, D. Edwards notices that when people, when watching people craft all over, they're saying y'all now. <laughs> it's becoming more of a popular term now. That is kind of funny. Maybe it's becoming the universal crafter's language. I'd love that. <laughs> okay, think about where you're putting your placement hammer. <laughs> I have to coach myself. Andrea says she loves your back, your backdrop. Is it wood you painted? Yes, it is um, from a pallet, actually. It's pallet wood that has been deconstructed. And we put the planks up on the wall using a nail gun and we put half inch plywood behind it. We actually have an entire blog post that explains the process. So if you want to check that out, you can find it at southernadornmentsdecor.com. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been painted palette wood. It was a fun little project my husband helped me with. We have a lot of first time viewers. Well, hello guys. Welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Feel free to follow along. You can learn to paint. Anybody can do it. Evelyn asked, can we order paint from you for your wood and butter workshop? So you can't order the paint from me, but you can order it direct from Deco Art. So I've got a link up in the video description with where you can go to buy paint from Deco Art. Okay, I think I've got it. I don't know. We're just going to, oh, I forgot about this part down here. Diane asked, what is the color and size of that pasta? It is a 5M size, just pink. That's the name of it, pink, nothing fancy. Um, I actually got it in a multi-pack of Posca pens that had a lot of different colors in it, so. People are still talking about the glitter. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to switch to a white Posca pen and do some fun little accents on our stars. Make them kind of pop. And then I'm going to get a black Posca pen and add some cute little lines on the edges of these stars to kind of make them stand out a little bit more. There we go. All right, let me check my reference photo and make sure I didn't miss anything important. Oh, it had a white line on the outside. I knew it felt like it needed something yeah. right along the outer edge here. Jen predicts this is going to be a bestseller design. Oh, you think so? You may be right. There we go. That did help. It kind of like just tied it up in a nice, neat little bow. Love okay. That. This was fun, you guys. It's different. I'm so, so glad you guys cast, cast, I almost said casted, cast your vote and voted for this one. It's a fun, different design than you usually see. It kind of reminds me of Lisa Frank. As you can see, we've got that fun little drop shadow there with the pink just adds a little something, something. And um, I love the ombre and the leopard print. So this one definitely had several steps involved, but it's it's totally worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you, Melissa. Zebra print. You said leopard. Oh, I did say leopard print. It's zebra print. My bad. Um, let me show you guys before you go the designs we're going to be teaching in the wood letter workshop. So if you haven't signed up yet, you can learn to paint wooden letters from any 
whoops, that was my hair dryer, from any craft store with us for just $10. It's a wood letter workshop. You can sign up at the link in the video description. This one has sort of a farmhouse stripe going on. And then we have this one that has leopard print and stripes and a little bit of gold. So pretty. And then we have this one that has flowers. Look how cute this is. So you guys, if you will, vote or not vote, but like tell me in the comments which one you're excited to try first. Are you excited about G, the one with the flowers? Or T with the leopard print? Or B with the farmhouse stripes? And if these are not your colors, you can totally do like colors like what's on my background back here, like pink and yellow and teal and purple and green instead of doing um, sort of primary colors like this one. Ashley says, what size does your Glowforge cut? I have a Glowforge Pro, so it's able to cut up to 19 inches. So if you're wanting to be able to cut door hangers with a Glowforge, you have to get the Glowforge Pro. Otherwise, you won't be able to cut anything larger than, I think, 12 inches. Okay, lots of people are saying the G. Yeah. Some are saying B. I love the flowers, too. The flowers is my favorite. No one's saying T. Nobody's saying T. Maybe because leopard print is kind of common. Common. Cheryl said G and T. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to do this. When I actually teach the, the leopard print, I'm going to do the stripes a little bit wider. I don't necessarily like the, um, the skinny black stripes. So we may try to teach wider stripes. Y'all are liking the G. Awesome. So if you want to learn how to paint these, sign up for our wood letter workshop. I put the link in the video description for you. Um, I can also put it right here in the comments, maybe. Hang on. If I can grab it. Yep, it's right here. So here's the link to sign up for the wood letter workshop. It's only $10 to participate. If you're a Painters Clubhouse member, you don't have to pay. It's free. So just know that. All right. Well, this has been so much fun painting the Easter egg with you guys today. So if you enjoyed it and you want to um, paint your own, you can get this design at shopdoorhangers.com. I put all the links up in the video description for you. I've also put a link with where you can go and buy deco art paint. So if you need some deco art paint to paint with, go grab um, some in the link up above. <laughs> all right. Bye, you guys. Y'all have a great afternoon. See you on Friday for Friday Fab Five.